Hello friends, once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. First of all, I thank you for taking your valuable time and interest in this topic. In this video, we are going to learn about what are forever chemicals and why they are called forever chemicals and why are they of great concern globally. So to begin with, first of all, the term forever chemicals is refers to the chemicals that belong to the family of chemicals called PFAS and PFAS stand for per polyfluoroalkyl substances. So the term forever chemical is like the nickname or the common name for the family of chemicals called PFAS whereas PFAS is the scientific chemical name of forever chemicals all right and in addition to this for your information when you say pfas or per polyfluoroalkyl substances it is not a single chemicals remember that it is rather a family of about approximately 4500 chemicals that comes together and constitute of a family called PFAS or forever chemicals. Next, PFAS or forever chemicals are those chemicals where their carbon atoms are bond with fluorine atoms. And in nature, if carbon atom is bond with a fluorine atom, then that bonding is said to be the strongest bond in nature. Therefore, this makes these chemicals very hard to break and as a result they remain intact in nature for a very long period of time and it is because of this reason that is they never break down and remain in the environment for a very long period of time and that is why these family of chemicals are called or named as forever chemicals okay and for your information the term forever chemicals was coined by J. Allen in the year 2018 and interestingly in the term forever chemicals the first letter of forever is F and F stands for fluorine atom and similarly the first letter of the second word which is chemical is C and C stands for the carbon atom. Next, let's see a short history about PFAS. PFAS was developed first in the late 1930s and 1940s and then it enters into the commercial and industrial production in the year 1950s. However, its presence in the environment was detected only from the year 2000 onwards after many studies related to PFAS was carried out. However, global attention regarding the PFAS was attained after Cousin et al. in the year 2022 reported that level of PFAS in rainwater is exceeding the limit which is given by the US Environmental Protection Agency. So it is after this finding was published then the world and the people start becoming aware and are concerned about what is PFS and what they can do to us human and our environment. Next, let's see a little bit more about PFAS or forever chemicals. And according to the Interstate Technology Regulatory Council PFAS fact sheet, PFAS is a family of chemicals are classified under two primary classes that is polymers and non-polymers and from these two classes the non-polymers are said to be the most commonly detected classes of PFAS and their presence can be detected in soil, water or any component of the environment. Then the class of non-polymers are further classified into two major subclasses and that is one is 
perfluoroalkyl substances and the other is called the polyfluoroalkyl substances and the main differences between these two subclasses is in their chemistry and i'm not gonna touch that part okay so with this now you can see right one is perfluoroalkyl substances and the other is polyfluoroalkyl substances so these are the two subclasses of pfas so therefore when you combine these two you'll get per and polyfluoroalkyl substances so that's how we get the pfa est in addition to this you will also come across that from the pfas family there are two chemicals which are popularly or well-known pfas one is called the perfluorooctane sulfonate or pfos and the other is called perfluorooctanoate or pfoa and some all time also referred to as the perfluorooctane carboxylate PFOS and PFOA are the part of PFAS family and PFOS and PFOA are the most commonly studied PFAS till date and for your information PFOS and PFOA are also actually included under this, this Stockholm convention and interestingly PFOS is listed under the annex B of the Stockholm convention that is, PFOS production and uses of POS should be restricted. Whereas, PFOA is listed under the Annex A of Stockholm Convention. Which means that the production and uses of PFOA should be eliminated globally. And if you want to know more about Annex A, Annex B under Stockholm Convention, you kindly check my other video on the Dirty Dozens. Next, we will see why. PFAS or the forever chemicals are of great concerns globally and the reason is first of all these chemicals or family of chemicals are not found naturally however they are all man-made chemicals when they are released into the environment they remain persistent in nature for a very long period of time and also they have the property of bioaccumulation as they move from one trophic level to the another along the food chain and because of their strong bond between the fluoride and the carbon bond they become extremely stable and therefore they resist to break down and as a result they have a great potential risk to human as well as to the environment and overall these are the new groups of emerging contaminants or persistent organic pollutants so therefore, because of this, they are of great concern globally. Next, let us see how these PFAS come in contact with us human and our environment. The answer is these chemicals are actually present in each and every product that we use in our day-to-day -day life. For example, the use of non-stick cookware, paper and cardboard food packaging. When we go to let's say uh, Domino's, KFC's, we get those food packaging, right? Even those contain PFAS in them. Waterproof clothing, for example, in raincoats, then carpet, mattresses, and also in many cosmetic products. Firefighting, electronic and electrical application and other industrial applications. Why these PFAS are found in almost each and every product that we use in our day-to-day -day life. The simple reason is because this PFAS exhibit the properties that can repel oil or grease and also that are water resistance. And because of this characteristics or properties of PFAS, that's why we find that they will use them in different kind of products in our day-to-day -day life. Next, let's see what are the different health related problems associated with chronic exposure to PFAS? So these PFAS, when we use them in our day to day life, in one way or the other, they will enter or leach into our drinking water or surface water, ground water, soil, food, air, and then ultimately it enter into our food chain and also into our environment. Now, 
on continuous exposure to PFAS for a very long period of time will result in health related problems such as kidney cancers, testicular cancers, thyroid diseases, disruption of the endocrine systems, decline in fertility and weakening of the immune system etc. So therefore with these we can conclude that continuous exposure to a PFAS for a very long period of time will induce health related problems such as the one mentioned and therefore these are of great concern to us human being. So with that we now have come to an end of this video and these are the references that I referred to while preparing this video and I hope this video will be of great help to you and you will gain a lot of information after watching this video. With that, if you find this video helpful, please kindly like, share and subscribe to my channel. So once again, thank you so much and God blessed.